I don't know if you've noticed, but gas is expensive these days. Is there a solution? Well, for years, politicians have been telling us that ethanol is a renewable energy source that will reduce pollution and our reliance on foreign oil. I am for sugarcane, biofuels, switchgrass, and corn-based uh, uh, ethanol because of our need for independence on foreign oil. We will send our energy dollars to the Midwest, not the Middle East. <laughs> But an increasing number of people are skeptical about using ethanol for fuel. Ethanol is uh, it's a dangerous idea. It's a waste of our resources in putting money into something that I do not think will work. Corn-based ethanol, also known as grain, alcohol, and moonshine, is made by fermenting and distilling corn. You can enjoy it as an alcoholic beverage or burn it as fuel. The U.S. currently produces more than 7 billion gallons of ethanol each year and most of us routinely use gasoline that contains up to 10% ethanol. We talked to Ron Bailey, the science correspondent for Reason Magazine, to learn more about the ethanol fuel craze. The ethanol mandates came about as an outgrowth of an effort to lower air pollution from gasoline. It became part of the environmentalist community uh, response to global warming. Fueled by support from environmentalists and the corn lobby, politicians have showered the ethanol industry with subsidies. Ethanol subsidies right now, uh, the main one is what they call the blender's credit. It's 51 cents per gallon. The corn farmers also get an additional subsidy for just growing corn. Well, the other thing is, is that we certainly wouldn't want cheap ethanol being imported from somewhere else undercutting our corn farmers. So we have a 54 cent per gallon tariff against uh, uh, ethanol imported from other countries. If you add up all the subsidies that go to ethanol, it's probably in the area of about $8 billion. Some people, like the folks at the American Coalition for Ethanol, say that the subsidies are justified. And we believe the benefits that ethanol received from the federal government are warranted because ethanol is a homegrown fuel. It creates jobs and, and increases economic development in rural areas. It reduces our dependence upon foreign oil and provides Americans with a clean fuel choice to help clean up our environment. Uh, actually, the question of whether or not ethanol produces less pollution than gasoline is a very open question. If you add up all the costs, for example, the energy that goes into making fertilizer, if you add up the energy that goes into plowing the field, if you add up the energy that is used to produce the ethanol, if you add all that up, it's, if the net energy balance is not very good. In fact, a lot of researchers believe that, in fact, you're putting more energy into e producing ethanol than you get out of it when you burn it. Okay, but at the very least, ethanol reduces greenhouse gas emissions, right? Recent research actually shows that what has happened is, is that as we are turning more food into fuel in the United States is that farmers uh, around the world in developing countries, Brazil and Indonesia specifically, are now uh, boosting their food production. But to do that, they're chopping down more of the rainforests and uh, plowing up more grasslands to do that. This releases a lot more carbon dioxide than is being saved by producing renewable fuels in the United States. Ethanol is much worse for the environment um, than gasoline, as it turns out. It also turns out that pollution may not be the biggest problem associated with ethanol. We're in the midst of a world food crisis. Uh, food has not been this expensive for over three decades, and this is pushing several million people to the edge of starvation. And part of the problem is that we are turning food into fuel. The amount of um, grain that it takes, the amount of corn that it takes to produce one tank, 20 gallon tank of ethanol, could feed one person for an entire year. The IMF estimates that 60% of the recent increase in prices of food around the world is a result of our biofuel subsidies and our biofuel craze, if you will, in the United States and, and in Europe as well. And this has to stop. So ethanol is bad for taxpayers, bad for consumers, bad for the environment, and bad for the world's poor. Does anyone benefit from ethanol? The winners from ethanol subsidies are the farmers. And secondly, of course, the big uh, agribusiness companies, uh, places like Archer's, Daniel's, Midlands, are making a ton of money uh, as well. Our county grows 14 million bushels of corn, and just by the narrowing of the basis or increasing our prices, that's an extra $3.5 million in the farmer's pockets. Overall, ethanol production increases the farm income in America $4.5 billion annually. As you might imagine, ethanol subsidies are also very popular with politicians from corn-producing states. 
I strongly believe one solution to this oil addiction is an increased use of domestically produced biofuels, such as ethanol. Everything about our domestic renewable fuels is good, good, good. The environmental community has finally realized its error. They're against ethanol subsidies uh, at long last. So why are the senators, why are Congress people still supporting this? Largely because this is how they garner votes. The farmers are a very loud lobby here in Washington, D.C., and uh, it would be very uh, politically brave to oppose them at this point. In fact, despite all the criticism, the U.S. government recently increased its support of ethanol. In December of this past year, Congress passed and the President signed legislation that would mandate the production of 36 billion gallons of biofuels by 2022. Now what does that net out to? In order to produce that, under current conditions, that would basically equal uh, turning the entire American corn crop into ethanol. Should the government increase its support of emerging technologies like cellulosic ethanol? Now, a lot of people who are in favor of biofuels are saying, well, yes, you're right, Ron, we should not be making corn ethanol. But what we really should be focusing on is what they call cellulosic ethanol. And what they mean by that is to use, if you will, plant material, not grain. And uh, that it probably is a little bit better, but it still doesn't get rid of the problem. You have to devote cropland to producing these uh, biofuels. And that will mean, again, higher food prices. A viable, renewable energy source would be great for everyone. Don't subsidies create an incentive for biofuel researchers to innovate? Look, oil prices are the highest that they've ever been. Uh, if renewable fuels, biofuels, were such a good deal, they would already be emerging without government subsidies and without government help. The subsidies are actually telling us is that they're not a good deal, that we should be devoting our resources to finding other uh, alternative uh, sources of fuel rather than turning food into fuel. Here's to an end to ethanol subsidies. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.